Um, I guess the other... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Bernardo, hold on. we got Ray on the line, so you can actually ask him. Ray, how are you doing today? Hey, how you doing, man? We're doing pretty good. We're actually in the middle of a discussion about um, heavy metal, believe it or not, so we figured you should join in on that, and then we'll start talking to you on some other stuff. So, Bernardo, go ahead with uh, with Ray. Yeah, um, you uh, you used to wrestle Hello? a lot with uh, heavy metal. Um, and Hello. He was right up there Hello. with you guys. Can you hear me? Um, I can hear you. Um, can okay. you hear uh, Bernardo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't hear him clearly. Okay, Bernardo, speak up a little bit louder. Okay. Um, yeah, Ray Mysterio. Well, first of all, let me just say it's a real honor to speak to you. I mean, you're uh, probably one of the best wrestlers that I have ever seen live. It's hard to pick up on the phone right here. I can hear you, Dave, very clearly. Hello. Uh, can you hear me, he, Dave? I can hear. Ray, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, that's good. Okay, what what was ahead. he saying? Because I, I can't hear him. I can't hear him speak up. Hello? Go ahead, Bernardo. All right, let me uh, try it again. Uh, uh, so it's just basically um, what uh, what can you say of heavy metal, uh, Ray Mysterio? Um, he, used to be, he used to wrestle a lot with you guys, and he was practically right right there with you guys as far as um, you know, being a top talent from Mexico. Um, you know, why, why didn't uh, he come over and uh, join you guys in WCW and such? You know what, Dave? It's very hard for me to pick up. I can't hear him. At, not at all. As soon as he starts talking, it starts breaking up. I know he's asking me about heavy metal. Yeah, he's basically asking, um, um, how you know, what did you think of heavy metal, and um, um you know, like when, as, as far as like why why he why he never came to the United States. Well, well, uh, when I worked with heavy metal down in AAA, it was it was actually uh, what greatest matches we can ever have. Um. His purpose, I, I really don't know. Maybe he wasn't that sure of himself of making it here. But uh, once everyone uh, basically took apart from AAA, when Conan left and uh, and and a couple of people started leaving, like Parker, he was he was one of the fewest that that were really loyal to AAA, and he did he didn't really want to make a business elsewhere until until maybe he saw somebody was already set. And and of course after he saw everyone set. In WCW, that's when he, I think he kind of tried to talk to Conan, or, or maybe they did talk about, uh, about him coming over here to the United States, but it never worked out. Yeah, that's pretty, that's too bad, because he, uh, he was, he was right there along with you guys. Um, hey, wouldn't, right, right, wouldn't, wouldn't you say, like, um, as far as, like, talent goes, that he was, I mean, his talent was equivalent oh, to his, me, the top guy. Oh, his talent was great. I mean, I, yeah. I remember when, uh, uh, back when I was in, I wasn't even a wrestler. He used to be Canelo Casas, yeah. and uh, he used to come down to Tijuana, and I used to check him out. And oh, he, I mean, his style was just back then. I was, I was barely growing up with the sport, and I was, I was just from the, from the fans' perspective, and uh, I, I, you know, I would really, I would really get it, uh, amused by his style of wrestling. It's kind of like the newcomers now that that they kind of watch us, and they're like, wow, this is good stuff, you know. So uh, I mean, his style, without a doubt, is has been one of the best. Okay, uh, just one last thing, um, Dave. A couple of days ago, you had uh, talked about how uh, Mick Foley had has had a, a very big influence as far as uh, you know the upcoming wrestlers that we'll see in the next generation. Um, you know, you could also say that about uh, Rey Mysterio. You know, he has he has influenced a lot of the uh, you know probably the next generation and current crop of new wrestlers out there. Um, but you know, there's also negative effects to that influence. You know, what what uh, what do you think about that, Ray Mysterio? You know, because you know your hey, you style of wrestling question? does have its uh, its uh, okay. downfalls in that uh, you know it it, uh, it shortens the uh, possibly shortens the career of many of the wrestlers. Okay, let me let me let me ask him because he's having trouble hearing you. Um, yeah, he was basically saying that like um, you know like like with Mick Foley that you've been one of the biggest influences on young wrestlers. Um, yeah. And you know, cer certainly, the one thing that you've done in, in in the United States, and maybe maybe and even in Mexico to an extent, is that small you know smaller guys can get into wrestling because you paved the way. Whereas before, promoters would just you know like immediately dismiss someone of of your size or yeah, even a yeah. little bit bigger than you. But he's also going that because your style is so is so like acrobatic and sometimes dangerous that it also has. Uh, you know, perhaps will lead to shorter careers of, of wrestlers as well. And what are your thoughts of, of, of both of those things? I guess, I guess he, he is right definitely about about uh, the, uh, our style of wrestling and how we try to innovate things. And maybe that's that's a shorter process in our career. But, but uh, 
that's I mean that's that's kind of like like the road that we pick. We know we know we can't get hurt very easily, and we know we can be out, you know, uh, for for injuries, you know. But but I I guess in, I mean in the sport in in any sport you got you got the risk of getting hurt. So why not why not do something you uh, you feel like doing, and and like innovating your own style, which which makes it even better. No matter, I mean, when when you start when you start thinking about that, you, you're not really thinking about about um, how long is my my career going to be in the sport. You know, pretty much is it's it's it, it's you doing what you want and and just living day at a day at a day. I think there's far more of a downside for people emulating Mick Foley than emulating Ray, because as Mick Foley always says, he couldn't jump high, so he jumped off high things. And yeah, it obviously takes like. A good deal of athleticism to try the stuff that Ray and the Luchadors try, as opposed to pretty much anybody can go up on something high and, and jump off of it. And we see a lot of that in the Indies with guys, you know, trying things like that. And pretty much the only yeah. people that really emulate the Lucha style are people that can actually do it. So I think there's yeah. more of a downside people trying the freaky things that Foley has done that are just dangerous. Yeah, my, yeah. I mean Foley. I mean with with. Uh... With the way he's he's just involved throughout throughout his career in wrestling, I mean he's 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 done a magnificent job of of doing what he loves because you you can you can see it right off the back. I mean he 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 feels everything he does in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Um, before uh, before we actually the first things we should probably talk about is is how are how are you doing and how are you you know how are you feeling how's the knee doing and everything like that. Well, I'm I'm picking up on my therapy. I mean it's it's been the same for for two and a half months now. Just uh, five five day a week therapy, and, and it's, I'm, of course I'm getting a little bit uh, stronger on my leg, starting to lift a little bit more heavier as far as squats and, and all that. But um, I mean, I, I still I still got a ways to go. I still feel unsafe to to even uh, jump from the sidewalk down to the to the ground because it's, it's, you know it's my, there's a there's like a little unsafeness in, in that knee right now that I. I can't be moving it around that much, and until that goes away, I guess I'm I'm probably going to get ready to come back and do a little bit in the ring. What is the doctor like giving you any advice as far as um, what you should or shouldn't be doing in the ring, or is it just one of those things where where um, you know the you know like like are there any, are there any things that are harder on your knees that maybe you should give up, or is it or is it just one of those things where it was just you, it was you just considered kind of a freak thing because you know anyone can get hurt their knee at any time in yeah. wrestling. Pretty much, the doctor said is uh, the, the the reason for my for both of my surgeries that I've had uh, is because I've been I've been jumping off the, the the either top turnbuckle or from the from the apron down to the floor okay. and and landing in uh, landing on both feet flat, which uh, the ligament that that I tore. Every time you land flat on your on your legs, on your feet, I'm sorry, uh, that ligament uh, bounces off the two bones. So he, he told me to, to take that away as much as possible. So is that, like that, is that like that paraguayo kind of like flying? Yeah, exa move? exactly, exactly. Every time I land that, like every time you do a backflip and you land on your feet back, I mean that 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 uh, messes it up every time. So he's like, the more you can stay off your feet, the better. So like, I mean, you, but I can I can still jump on the ropes, do uh whether I have to land on my back or on my chest, you know that's no problem. Just just to keep off my feet a little bit. So that would be like say say a, a, a tope where the other guy catches you and you're not landing with both feet on the ground would be safer kinda, than maybe maybe than jumping off the top rope and just doing the backflip off the top rope. Yeah, exactly. Or even just yeah. like an axe handle. Yeah, yeah, like even a double sledge off the top or something, yeah. Yeah, or, or, or I mean, even, even now that I know that I can't be doing that as much, I know that every time it's getting close to, to landing on my feet, I'm always obviously going to either tilt sideways and take take the fall on my side or something. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's already three surgeries in, in uh, less than two years. And yeah. I, I, I think, I mean, this, I've, I've been wrestling for ten years now, and, I, I you know, kinda, it kind of gets me – Deep down inside, knowing that I'm only 25 and and I'm already in my third surgery in, in less than two years, so I just want to make sure uh, this this time I'm off. I make sure I come back right and and not pressured, so I can definitely come in again. Because the doctor, the first thing he said, he 
He said that uh, if my if my PCL would have been torn, which it was stretched out, uh, it would have been hard for me to come back to wrestle again. Wow. Do you feel that you might have come back too early the last time? Um, maybe maybe not too early because I, I did feel that I was strong enough and, and ready, but I guess I guess it's it's different thinking that and uh, I mean feeling feeling you're strong but outside and on like on your daily basis and not in the ring. I I, I don't think I was ready enough for, to be in the ring already. Mm -hmm. so I mean, like, maybe, like like night after night type thing? Yeah, night after night type thing. Yeah. So that kind that kind of that kind of messed with me. What's and, um? And, oh, go ahead. So I was I was just gonna say that that uh when they when they um repaired my ACL again um the like the, like I said the doctor said that that my PCL was hard to see so when they found it they actually had to shrink it a little bit because it was stretched out so they shrunk it with some laser and um. Obviously, it's a little bit stronger now, but he said if that if that would have been torn, it would have been really hard for me to come back to wrestle, which I guess uh, he would have probably had made a miracle or something. But uh, thank God I'm still here. Now, what, what have, have you talked to Juventud Guerrero lately? Uh, I talked to him last week. How, how's, his okay. how's his recovery coming? He's doing okay. Uh, this this Wednesday, he had, a, he had to go see Andrews. And... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think he should be ready in about three weeks. Mm -hmm. He should be ready to come back. Have you talked to Conan as far as his status in the company right now? Um, everything is okay. I mean, he's he's staying with us. I think um, he temporarily got suspended for two months. And um, but besides that, you know, he's 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 a team player. He knows how to do it. But but um, just the um, this group that they've been having recently, you know, it didn't turn out the way it should have, or they didn't, they didn't, they took it the wrong way, and they try to take, um, and they try to take other people down to the hole. So, you know, it was, it was all just a big mistake. But as far as, as far as what I know right now is, is that um, Coin will be out for two months without wrestling. Mm. Um, let's see. We've got. I got a series of questions here. Rather than start a call, because we're going to have to go to a break in just a second. Um, this is from Chris Viola, and he was talking about. Um, can Can you explain what your mask stood for in your mind? You know, your Ray Mysterio Jr. mask. That I guess your your did your uncle give you that mask basically? Or, yes. Or, yeah. 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 Right. He gave it to me. Um. It um. Came out, it came out one time. Uh. I was uh, well. I had the, the wrestling name of Coley B, and um, just out, uh, out of the bloom, he he just popped in the ring and 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 uh, gave me the name with the mask. It was pretty fun. But uh, I, the mask to me, it, it was it was just part of my whole character. I mean, my my the way I, the way I felt it was kind of like action heroish. Uh, you know, you have you have your wrestling life and you have your private life, and and that really, that was that was a big factor back then. You know that that uh, most of the people didn't know who I was, and um, I had my my separate lifestyle. Now it's a little bit harder. So yeah, well, how has your how has your life changed as far as you know, you know living in in San Diego area and everything like that, and and going to Tijuana, where before. Outside of say a wrestling arena, even though you were a, a big star that people had seen on TV, you could walk the streets of of Tijuana or San Diego, pretty much in anonymity. You just look like you know any any you know you look like basically any any guy who just goes to the gym a lot. Um, yeah. And and now it's kind of like you know when people see you, I mean like you're you know at least to re certainly to wrestling fans, you're totally recognizable. How's the, how's your life changed? It's 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 been in a good way because. You know, I, I grew up, I grew up all over this place, San Diego and Tijuana. So, so now it's it's kind of cool that 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 I can I can go to a mall, I can go to the gym, or I work out, and and I mean wrestling fans, you got them all over the place, and and, and it's kind of cool that you can relate to to people that are my age, you know, because most most of the fans that are watching right now are between the ages of of eighteen and, and twenty five, you know, young the the younger the younger crew. So um, it's kind of cool that 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 
you know, the word gets around and we can we can have a, a, a straight conversation because I, you know, as far as far as people who like wrestling, not in particular my fans, but people people who like wrestling and can can uh, just go with a good conversation. You know, it it uh it kind of keeps you up because it's 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 the new generation that's going up, and, and it's all the people that are that are following you through TV and and that know that you're you're still on TV, but you're also you're also a cool guy like like any of them. You know, you can you can do whatever you want. You can kick back. You can you can have a drink. You can have a beer. Whatever you want. You know, and it's and and that's that's what makes it cool to them, and what makes it cool to me too, that that we can relate. To the fans and that. Got a couple of notes here. I want to get through on the emails. Uh, the rating for the final rating for uh, SmackDown was a 5.2. So it was the, I believe that would be, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe that would be the second highest rating, I think, two weeks ago. I think, was it a 5.3 two weeks ago? When they, I know they set the record against the president. Uh, yeah, it was, re- I don't remember what the, uh, I'll see if I can find it while you're talking. Yeah, that was two weeks ago was the record. Last week was down to a four seven. This week is five two. So that would be the highest against real, real strong competition because all the NBC big shows were were going at it. So very, very impressive, which I think speaks volumes for. Um, I think it speaks volumes for the quality of the Raw show, among other things, on Monday night. A um, couple of notes. Uh, Randy Rhea says uh, Papi Chulo had a match in August 1998 against Val Venus on Raw. So anyway, that's we got actually a lot of emails on that one. Five point uh, four three for SmackDown. Uh, 5.43 two weeks ago. So that would so this would be the second highest because the Schwarzenegger one did a 5.1. I remember that. Um, do you? This is interesting. Uh, Brian, do you think ECW would improve its rating if they moved the show to Monday night at 8 p.m.? It's a good question. It'd be head to head with uh, WCW, but I mean, yeah. the first hour hasn't been doing basically. I mean, they've lost so many viewers off their first hour that those viewers might be willing to tune into something else that's available at the same time. I think that their rating would for sure go up, but then you're looking at a perception thing because it's one it's one thing to, to be out there getting beaten, you know, if they got beat they would they would certainly be doubled on in the Monday night race they would be doubled by WCW and quadrupled by WWF. And I think it's better to just be on Friday night on your own and not have that same perception. But I think that as far as the the rating itself, I think it would go up. I think they would draw a better rating Monday from 8 to 9 than they would draw Friday from 8 to 9. They did announce at the uh, Rob Van Dam press conference today that CBS has um, okayed, uh, I guess, a ton of advertising for this coming year for the TNN show. So I think it'd be best for them to wait and see how that does before doing I mean, I don't even think they've obviously even talked about moving the show. But I think if that were brought up, it would be better to wait and see how all the additional advertising does before they decide to move it or something like that. Uh, this is... I heard Tammy and Candido are going to WCW, and Tammy was going to be with Ric Flair. I, that has been discussed. Uh, I've heard people who have seen Tammy of late who think that that would be a very dumb idea for WCW. Personally, I think that would be a really dumb idea for WCW. But I believe that they are going to... Um, I know that there's talk of them getting a tryout. There is also the claim that Paul Heyman, and I, I don't know this to be true, but this, this word has certainly gone around... Uh, that Paul that, that Paul Heyman has told them that they can get their jobs back in ECW if they were to get a tryout match with WCW, so that way it would look like he had raided someone from WCW. That that's what he's looking at doing, or making it look like there was something, you know, something like that, kind of a perception deal there. And as far as tryout, does that mean like a dark match, or does that mean actually doing something on TV without a contract for one week? I don't know. Um, well, I think it would be without a, con- a tryout match without a contract. Um, I think, and then I think they would probably keep it off TV. I know that that. There's been a lot of talk that they will be going to the Nassau show on Monday, um, but they're not listed as far as them. I, th- I think that would just be to say hi and just to try to get a job more than, um, you know, actually appearing on the show as talent. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, it's another one about Papi Chulo and Val Venus. Um, and Michael Cole gave the translation that Papi Chulo's name was Pimp Daddy, noticing the irony of the matchup. Is that, you know. Uh, didn't Mr. Pogo get ser- seriously hurt in an explosive match like that? Um, yeah, I was at that match in Japan um, in 96. That was and, more from a botched move, though. Yeah, no, it wasn't from the explosion. What happened was um, he took a bump off the apron onto broken glass, and, and there's some contraption with broken glass and things and maybe barbed wire, and he broke his neck. Uh, but that was from the bump. It wasn't from the explosion. Um, that was the match with Terry Funk that when we went in and had Funk on that he was talking about. 
Uh, Friday's Newark Star Ledger, which is New Jersey's largest sports paper, they had a big article about wrestling in the sports page. It claimed that Tito Santana was the WWF's second biggest star in the 80s behind only Hulk Hogan. I haven't stopped laughing yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brian's going to be laughing for the next 45 minutes as well. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, do you think Hunter Hearst Helmsley has a taste for blood after the Royal Rumble and might be willing to take the insane bumps reserved for Foley? No. I hope, no, I hope not. Uh, especially with his knees, oh, I'd be stupid. Um, I don't know if you could ever get a taste for blood where you would want to take crazy bumps for the hell of it if you didn't need to. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Foley did it as a way to get over, and Helms is already over in the WWF champion, and what kind of thought process would it be to go, you know, I'm already over, I'm already the top guy, but by God, I'm going to you know, do something really dangerous. That's not going to uh, happen. Well, Foley did that at Hell in the Cell. He was already over by then. But but Helmsley and Foley have totally different mentalities, so yeah. you're right. Yeah, you're definitely right. Um, this is, I plan to attend the Living Dangerously pay-per-view next month in Danbury, Connecticut. Is there any word of a match of whether we'll have Mike Awesome defending the title? I mean, it's not officially announced, but I believe the main event on that show is going to be Mike Awesome against Masato Tanaka. And there's certainly a lot of hints going around that there will be a TV title tournament on that show. I don't, that, that is also not official. Um... How come CWA tapes from Germany are so hard to get? Uh, Nobody records them. I, I, I don't know. I, there's, there's no problem with translation. Then again, they have that with England, and I can get England tapes pretty easy. Uh, maybe nobody wants to watch them. All right, here we go. Remember when Mick Foley wrestled Kane in a, in, in, on Raw in the Hell in the Cell match? Foley tried twice to throw a chair onto the top of the cage but missed, and the chair ended up almost hitting him coming back down. Um, he took a bump like Shawn Michaels off the side of the cage. He took a few unprotected chair shots. It's pretty obvious by looking at him that he's in worse physical shape than he was then. I don't think he can ever duplicate the match that he had. Uh, he shouldn't try, but he got huge pops on Raw and all he, of late, um, and all he did was punch the whole time he was in the ring, which was a total of three minutes. He doesn't need to do anything crazy. Nobody wants to see him leave the sport almost crippled and unable to find his car in the parking lot. Hey, I, I, I have trouble finding my car in the parking lot a lot, so that's not, uh, uh, you know. Uh, let's see. This, so this, this is for Ray, so we'll wait for Ray to get back here. And uh, is it true that Sitch and Candido have verbally agreed to a WCW deal? I, I, I'll check on that. I had not heard that. I know that there had been talk in the last week about it, though. And this is another thing for Ray. Okay, we're just waiting for, we're just waiting for Ray to get back here. And uh, before that, uh, let me just get a couple of more notes here. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Cauliflower Alley Club is going to be having its meeting in uh, Las Vegas, um, and that'll be uh, over this weekend. And at, at Sam's Town Hotel and Gambling Hall in Las Vegas from 10 to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, admission free. So if you're in Las Vegas, they will have a wrestler signing autographs, Legends of Wrestling signing autographs. Saturday will be Pat Patterson and Danny Hodge. Sunday will be the Crusher, Red Bastine, Ole Anderson, and Chavo Guerrero Sr. Okay, so got that. Ray Mysterio Jr. is back on the line. Uh, Ray, how are you? Hello? Ray? Oh, this this thing is, like, scary. <laughs> Try that again in a minute. Right, we're in Chicago. Okay, is Ray, is Ray up? Uh, we are getting Ray up. Ray. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How you doing? Good. Good. This is better. Okay. The good. This is a lot better. Okay. Um. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to ask you, and actually had a couple of questions about this. Yeah. Is uh, that whole thing that went down a couple of weeks ago with uh, Chris Benoit and everybody leaving and Conan and Shane and everything, and and w what was your uh, what was your uh, thoughts about how everything went down? And I know that like uh, you, what exactly did you say to management? Because I know that like, you know you you and Conan. You know, obviously, go back um, probably to almost the beginning of your wrestling career. Yeah, go back exactly. about eight years now. So, what was you know, what's your thoughts about how everything went down there? Well, um, uh, this basically what what I think is that that uh, what what everyone tried to get cleared as far as as far as the people that left and the people that are still here was that that 
we've been we've been stopped too many times from from becoming stars, and and I think if if we have if we have the potential to become a, a, a superstar, or at least given the opportunity to become a superstar in, in professional wrestling, you know, you would think uh, it it would happen here, but it, but it's not happening. So so that's that's what we spoke out. We just spoke out that we've been held too many times, and that that we want we want the opportunity given to us that that we know that that if if you guys put it on the table we're going to take it and we're not i mean we're not going to drop the ball we're going to take it all the way to the top but but uh unfortunately uh i guess politics that that go throughout sport of wrestling uh which is what that the thing that that has held many people back and um uh, and the results were that that some people left like Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, Perry, you know, great. I mean, great, great talent, very good uh, talent. Were you, were you, sorry, right. you know, were you pretty sorry to see them go, especially Dean, because you and Dean had some oh phenomenal matches. Oh my gosh, matches. you know what? Uh, uh, I'll be straight up with you. And, 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 and eighty-two for that matter. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I didn't say yeah, and, and eighty-two. Was, I mean, you and Eddie had phenomenal matches too. Yeah, and and one thing I I can never forget about Eddie is that I remember he was. He was so strong in, in Mexico City when when he when I was down in AAA and and he left me like a king over there and uh, and as far as Dean I mean my 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 first wrestling match ever to have in WCW was against Dean Malenko so uh, I mean yeah I, I did I did feel feel really bad at that that they let him go you know that they that they took separate ways because uh, I mean the matches that I had with Dean. With Eddie and with the rest of the guys, not not putting anyone down, but I mean Dean personally because I started with him right here in WCW, uh, you, you could say. And uh, I called him up last week and I told him, you know, God bless you, take care of yourself, you know, wherever you're at, you know, who knows what the future might bring for for any of us. You know, you might be over here again, or, or I mean, I might be over there. But uh, I called him up to to thank him for 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 the support that he's given me throughout the sport because he's been a, he's been a great teacher to me. And Would you say it. that your uh, match with Eddie at the uh, Halloween Havoc, I think it was like mask versus title. Yeah, match of the year. Maybe your best match in all of WCW. Uh, I would have to say yes. Uh, yes, definitely. One one of I, I would have to say probably the best of the year of that year or yeah, maybe definitely. throughout several years but it was it was one hell of a match and and I, I i go back to very good thoughts about that if you had to name like um i don't know if it's one or three or four of matches that you've had since your career started that you would say or you're looking back are your favorites like which which ones come to mind right away when i which when i would ask a question like that? i would i would have to say super j cup with psychosis oh yeah uh i would have to say even though it was a very short match, but but the way it was set up, uh, we we once had a four on four. It was uh, Liger, uh, Ghetto, uh, Ghetto, um, uh, Juventude, and and Chris Jericho against. Uh, it was uh, Ultimate Dragon. Uh, other two, other two. Oh my God! I lost the other two. It was it was a four on four match we had in Japan. I remember. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we kind of felt very proud at the time because our ex boss was down there, Antonio Pena. So he was he was actually uh, the only two traveling from Mexico were were Juventud and me, and uh, it was actually a hell of a show that we had down there. Uh, I go back again to Juan de la Barrera, Mexico City, uh, for the championship belt, the welterweight. It was me and Psychosis, and uh, and I would have to say uh, the three-on-three -three matches we used to have with Super Calo, winners, and me against uh, Heavy Metal, Psychosis, and at the end it was Hubi, but at the beginning it was uh, Picudo. Did you ever get to the point where you could do like an entire match with Psychosis without calling a single spot? Definitely, without a doubt. Because that J-Cup match, I remember watching that, and the crowd was just, they were watching so intently, and it was so quiet. Yes, that you was could hear you guys breathing breath. on the mat while you were doing your, uh, you know, your wrestling there at the beginning. You know what, you know what, was, what, what, what really amused me? Because 
uh, that was actually my first match and my first wrestling match in, in Japan. Just just the way the audience would just just lay back and and wait for everything to happen little by little and just just the reactions. It was it was incredible. You always hear about people that are the uh, wrestlers that are going out of Japan and they're like you know the crowd is like this and like this and and and, and, they, and they do this and they do that. So you kind of just imagine everything in your head. But it, there's nothing like like somebody telling you how it is than to really uh, be there and 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 living it, you know, with flesh and blood. Two, two, before we go to the calls, I just want to bring up two of my favorite matches that you were in were um, like about two weeks apart, a couple of years ago. It was both with Juventud Guerrero. One was in in ECW and in Philadelphia. It was in fact it was Mick Foley's last match in ECW, I believe. Oh my God, yes. And when you did the, the Hurricane Rana on the like on the car, like and it was freezing out. Yeah, we had. You know what? That's right. And I and I totally excluded uh, uh, ECW, but yes, that was that was one of uh, one of the best matches that I've ever had in, in ECW because we we took the cameras to the outside and I don't I don't I think they have, they have already done that before, but but uh, we, me and who we were kind of we, you know we were excited, we were jacked up. Like let's take the cameras outside. So we took them outside. We we did a uh, uh, I think it was a uh, power bomb, power bomb off the the, for the hood of the car, and uh, I think I back dropped them and I and I came off with some head scissors. So, yeah, that was I mean that was that was some good times back then too. The other one remember. was the other one was just a couple weeks later um, in Tijuana at um, it wasn't even at the auditorium. It was um, at the Palenque, and I thought that match was just that match was fun. Did a one on one? It was a one-on-one -on -one for uh, for the title, I think. Um... You know, and you know what, Dave? I I was just watching because my kid, my kid likes, uh, you know, when he sees when he sees the tapes that I'm going over, he, he likes kicking back and watching uh, wrestling matches with me. But he kind of doesn't really understand it from back then because he sees me with a lot of different colors, and and he used to he used to see me now with 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 the new design and everything. So it was kind of like, who is this guy? But he he would know it was his dad. And I was just watching that that very match that you're talking about. It was in the Palenque, the Tijuana. Yeah, because I remember that that match. The heat in that match was like so incredible. It was intense, huh? It was intense. Oh, I just like like the whole match, like a 25, 28 minute match, and the heat. You know, the, the heat was so great, and um, you know, I mean, I remember, remember like people were going because I had actually been to the Philadelphia match, and then yeah. the people who I was with were not at the Philadelphia match, and they go, "How would you compare them?" And I was like, "Well, they're totally different matches, but." Yeah. But I couldn't say one was better than the other. They were, like, equal. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're going to start with Roy in Chicago. Roy, how are you doing? Pretty good, Dave. Uh, What's Ray, up, Roy? I have, a, I have a question for you. A few months ago in an interview, you said that psychosis had pretty much lost his spirit for wrestling and not willing to learn new moves. He's so tired of being jobbed. And is that, has that changed at all? You know that, uh, Dave, can you repeat that for me? He said that you had done an interview where you said that Sakosis had kind of lost his spirit, I guess, you know, from, um, I guess, maybe bogged down from the politics and, and oh, that's, everything. That's, that's right. You know, I, I've known, I've, I know Sakosis very well. And, uh, um, if there's, if there's one thing we've, we've, uh, we've criticized ourselves about, about wrestlers in Tijuana, because that's where we grew up, is that, that, uh, you know, no matter how good they, no matter how good you are, you know the the, the promoters, you know they 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 always keep you keep you down. If, if they don't want to see you rise, they'll keep you on the bottom and and you know they'll they'll bury you or, or they'll do whatever whatever they have. You know, not or maybe not even wanting to do that as much, but just keeping you there. You know, in the mix, not actually giving you a chance to to be on top. So. uh with psychosis, I, I kind of felt it that way because he, you know, his his spirit was always up when he was when we were having those one on one matches back at Bash to the Beach and and when we first came in, and all of a sudden, you know, it was it was kind of always uh, uh, him on down, him him always uh, beat 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 beat, and it kind of brought him to a point where it's like, damn, you know, every every time uh, I step in the ring, you know, people know the quality, but but there's there's really no no push for me. There's there's nothing there, and I I think it brought his morals down. Do you do you think do you think that that like mentally like as far as like confidence level and stuff has has hurt him to where 
you know, he came out of Mexico. You know, he started at the bottom in Mexico, worked his way up to where he was on top, and and really effective, you know, effective main eventer in Mexico. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then yeah, I mean, like you know, great heat. I mean, I saw him many times in Mexico in, in top matches, super heat, big crowds. And then he comes to the United States, and okay, he figures, you know, okay, you know, I start at the bottom. That's understandable. Work the way up, up to the top, yeah. Right, and then after a while, when it's not happening, do you think that it like hurt his confidence, going like, wow, maybe I, I, I'm not as I, I, good as I thought I was, or something? Definitely, definitely. I, I think, I think, I think not, not as much as 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 uh, I thought. I, you know, I thought it was a lot better than this, but but as much as as uh, just just thinking overall of of. What the, what uh, wrestling has to bring to you, you know, you, no matter how good you are, if 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 uh, if the person ain't there to help you out, you know, it's like, damn, you know, why 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 even kill myself if if uh, if nothing really big is gonna happen to me? And I think I think that just brought him down to a certain point, but uh, but mentally right now he's picking up because I've been in his head a lot. Um, uh, believe it or not, uh, Cyclops. You know, Cyc remember Cyclops that used to be in WCW. In, uh, we all we all hang out and live in the same area between San Diego and Tijuana. So we've gotten his head a lot because I mean, you're talking about psychosis of a guy that that he's only 28 years old and he has a whole I mean a whole history and 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 his wrestling is just outstanding. And and how can you let a guy come down like that? Because, like you said, Dave, coming out of coming out from Mexico City, being on the main events, I used to remember all the crazy shit he used to do in the ring, and and now it's like, you know, you see it, but it's it that spark isn't there, and he 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 just needs like self motivation from from himself and and maybe a uh, maybe a good. Uh, a good a good reason for him to to bring back that spirit again from from I from I'd have to say from the company from WCW because he is talent. Okay, and Dave, I had I had one more question for you. Mm -hmm. And it was about the whole Sabu going to WCW thing. I know it's kind of off topic, but isn't it kind of, isn't it Paul Heyman's philosophy that if you don't want to work in WCW, you don't have to? So why are they trying to trying to keep Sabu from going to WCW? I don't. I don't think that he's really trying to keep Sabu as much as trying to uh, establish that you can't. If if, if if the contract is valid, I think he's trying to establish, if nothing else, that you can't just walk in and steal my guys without a fight. Um, and I think that if if the contract is valid, I I I personally think that um, that he would rather at this point probably Sabu go but him getting something in return whether it be cash whether it be appearances from some WCW wrestlers or something so it's just like he's he gets something for this guy as as much as I mean in a sense I'm sure he'd like to have him only cuz he's he's so down because of all the injuries but um over the long haul I don't I don't think he would want a guy who doesn't want to be with him um it's not good for morale it's not it's not good for the company and speaking of Sabu I think he's had, he's had some influence on Ray's career and vice versa kind of What's that? Would you, Ray? Would you say that Sabu's had influence on your career? On oh, mine? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. See, see, I, I like. I, to me, it's like, it, uh, the uh, Sabu style definitely innovated, innovated a lot using the chairs and and you know jumping off the chairs to the rope to the table, and you know I mean for a while down in Mexico. And I do have to give Sabu his props. We, I mean, we were we were doing that stuff, and we were we were big into it. Obviously, you come to a place like WCW where you can't do as much as you would want to do because of certain angles and stuff. So you kind of have to slow down your pace. But uh, definitely, Sabu was a, was was a big influence in, in 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 my style of wrestling. I would say, and even in psychosis and in. And a lot of the guys, you know, I mean, even Conan back then, he was using the chairs and drop kick and all that. So, I mean, we all we all pick up a little bit from each from each style, and we kind of just put it in our in our in our own style. Anything else, Roy? I uh, know that's pretty much about it. Okay, let's let's go to it. Let's go to David in New York. David, what's up? Hey, uh, just before I get, I uh, ask Ray my question. 
I just wanted to ask, uh, Dave, do you, I got a press release that was sent to people that were at NACT about a uh, new TV show that Jim Duggan is going to be starring in. Do you want me to send over an email? Absolutely. You press release? I, didn't, I didn't even hear this one. What about the one Rena Maros? <laughs> Duggan TV show. You know, uh, what was it? I, I saw a list of some stuff that, that Mike Henderson's doing, too. I saw that this morning. Yeah. Like some TV show or something. But anyway, this show, the show's called Biker Court. And he's Biker the judge. Court. He's a judge in Biker Court? It looks like it's worked. I'll send you the press release, and <laughs> it has about what's in the pilot and stuff, and it has the phone number, so maybe you could get a copy or something. This isn't well, a real-life is... court show, is it? But, well, it says it's a cross between Jerry Springer, Judge Judy, and pro wrestling. Oh, okay. God. Oh, God. <laughs> and I said, I need a copy of that. The slogan is, when court gets rough, hacksaw gets tough. Victims find justice and criminals pay, and if necessary, they receive a two-by-four upside the head. <laughs> so it's, it's like it's like a mock courtroom where, where Jim Duggan, like, comes in and hits people with two-by-fours instead of, like, the judge, you know, like, yelling at him like yeah, yeah. Judy does. He has a two-by-four for a gavel. Who's, whose idea was that? Come on. Uh, I don't... <laughs> what? <laughs> so, <I> some... <laughs> who comes up with new... T who came up with rock and ball? By the way, did you notice the Rock and Bowl gag last night at SmackDown? Yeah. Yeah. The Ayatollah Rock and Bowler. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, my question for Ray is, because you were talking, actually, I was thinking about this, that you were talking about that match in Tijuana that he had a week after the, that he had a week yeah, after yeah. that match in ECW. Um, I thought that it was a really great match, but what did you think of that? I kind of thought that the, you know, the fall kind of ruined the match. The what? The what you mean, all the interference at the end, you mean? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, what do you think of that whole... Uh, Ray, I just want to ask what Ray that. thinks with, with, about that whole booking style that Conan was using at I that guess, I guess ba back then we were really into it, but, you know, sometimes you do things, and then and then you go back and, and watch, and you're like, okay, maybe, maybe uh, these people shouldn't have been here, or maybe we should have had only this. But, uh, at, you know, at the time, it was, it, was, it was fun, and it was exciting, and the people loved it. So I, I got to give credit for that. It kind of depends on the context of the match too, because sometimes you can have a match with a lot of run-ins and it'll be really cool. Yeah. But then there's other times yeah. where it's just totally pointless. Exactly. I thought it was weird watching this match. It's like here it is, Ray and Hoovy are having this really graceful match, you know, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, then like then some like psychosis is friends run, and then and then Conan runs in with a barbed wire bat. You know what I mean? I guess I guess kind of the idea back then was. Because we we did we did give the people two out of three falls, so we gave them almost three falls completely of of uh, of mat wrestling, uh, holds, uh, high flying, and then at the end we gave them that that big old smile so they can all be like shit, you know, either either why why did they have to screw up this good match or or they get excited themselves and 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 see the whole angle work out at the end. I just gotta, I just gotta say that it's really amazing that you were able, you did, I think it was in over eight days that you and Hoovy did like three really amazing matches. That it was the Philly match, the Tijuana match, and you also did what I thought was actually the best of them, at least from what they showed on TV. Yeah. The New York match? Yeah. The that New was York a, match? One of my favorites, actually, of the three. New York match? He had a match yeah. in New York with Hoovy, and like, the, and it was two out of three falls, and it was like each and each fall, each each he used like the different Japanese finisher type move. Yeah, like you pinned Hoovy in the first fall, I think, with the straight jacket suplex. And stuff. Yeah, and I, I just really uh, that was my favorite of the three because it was just it was just the best. You know how the other ones kind of just had like too much like the brawling and the stuff type mixed in. Yeah, that that was just more just a pure wrestling match, and he threw in the different finishers, and I just loved that match a lot. The, the one thing with with, with having because I actually saw those three matches is that um, the, the where the the New York match I thought technically was was probably technically the best of the three but the thing is that um, it didn't have like the other two had just phenomenal phenomenal crowd response and the New York crowd yeah. was like really it's a really hideous crowd that yeah. night so it, it took away from 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 the match but I mean like as far as like those guys doing their moves it was the New York you know the New York match was phenomenal yeah those lost Italian hall matches always had the worst heat yeah it was it was a really like it was a crowd I mean I remember sitting there and they're just sitting there and all they wanted was blood and this I think was when the commission wouldn't let them have blood yeah. so the crowd was just in a bad mood all night I mean yeah. it was just a it was just a really tough crowd
Just one last thing I want to mention is that, right, I don't yeah. know, like, I think my favorite matches along with the ones with Hoovy and some of the ones in Mexico was one, I think it was you teaming with Hoovy against La Parca and Psychosis on a Nitro. I remember that. Yeah, that it was, yeah. That was just, is it true, like, I remember hearing rumors at the time that you and the other three guys were upset about how your place is in the company and you just did a great, like, a great match just to tell, the, tell them to push you, kind of? Yeah, but I think I think back then we were like just frustrated at the time, and we're like, let's just go out there and fucking and bust it, you know? Let's just go out there and do what we do what we like doing, and 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 we felt it, you know? We went out there, we rocked, and we came back, we high fived, and we and we were just happy about the performance that we did. Okay, that's it, Dave. I'll send. A, I'll try to email you that press release and some other stuff. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Bye. We've got a news item. I want to thank Andy Patrizio for sending this one over. Uh, this just came across. Uh, I'll, let me, I'll read it to you. Uh, Time Warner Incorporated's World Championship Wrestling is facing a challenge from a three-man tag team of black and Asian professional wrestlers in court, not in the ring. Harrison Hardbody Norris, who's of course Hardbody Harrison, Bobby Hardwalk Walker, and listen to this one, and Kazuo Sonny Ono. Filed, you're going to love this, Brian. Brian, listen to this. Filed racial discrimination lawsuits today in federal court in Atlanta, claiming the Atlanta-based World Championship Wrestling treats the minorities unfairly. <laughs> the wrestlers protest that blacks are cast as thugs, pimps, pimps, that's the other show, and Uncle Tom's, and Asians as conniving and greedy. That's true. While white performers receive positive winning roles that advance their careers, the lawyers also say that their clients' white counterparts make substantially more money. Well, than those guys, <laughs> they do. God, it's Bobby Walker, hard to work. Hard to work, watch, whatever. Okay. Uh, why does every African American have to be portrayed as a loud mouth puke? Said Kerry Itchter, an attorney representing the wrestlers. Also on the wrestlers' legal team are Merrick Bernstein and former Atlant former state attorney general Mike Bowers, who campaigned for governor in 1998 on the issue of ending affirmative action programs. Wow. Okay, he campaigned. Listen to this on a, on on ending affirmative action programs, and now he's. Oh, my God. Bowers accused the media conglomerate of hypocrisy for promoting racial stereotypes at the same time it condemns the practice in Major League Baseball. These are people who are looking to penalize John Rocker for doing what is in these complaints, Bowers said. Boy, I tell you what, I have heard a lot of people make that analogy of John Rocker and, and pro wrestling lately. Uh, Bowers, okay, Rocker was, was suspended until May the 1st for racially offensive comments he made in Sports Illustrated, as you all know. Uh, the Braves are part of Turner's empire. Let me just see if there's anything else. The suit alleges that WCW violated federal racial discrimination laws to humiliate minorities and created a hostile work environment, among other claims. The suits seek opportunity for better roles that might lead to wrestling stardom. The wrestlers also ask for the status of regular employees, not independent contractors. They seek unspecified damages. Norris, who claims he lost his job because he's black. I don't think that's white. Oh, well. Once his contract reinstated. White males dominate professional wrestling and the audience for television spectacles. WCW has had few, if any, black stars with positive images. Uh, Booker uh, T. They have. Booker T. Booker T, right? Yeah. It's a positive image, no doubt. Uh, the one act, oh, here we go. The one act featuring blacks promoted now in WCW is Harlem Heat, a black duo, the suit, set, the suit says. One white combatant has appeared in black face to fight, and that's Ernest. Remember, bag owners know to fight a black opponent. Yeah. The suit says, no comment, says Alan Sharp, WCW PR director, when asked about the allegation. Sharp said, only one black act is being promoted by the group. Tune in Monday night and see for yourself, he said. Uh, I guess that means Booker T will get a book push Monday night. Uh, I think I think that's evident. Uh, the plaintiffs say that wrestling promoters must grapple with evidence that shows WCW writers and management direct the success of white wrestlers through the scripts at the expense of black wrestlers and other minorities, and that the workplace is hostile. Racial epithets are used, and nasty racial jokes are posted at the WCW offices, according to exhibits in the suit. Oh, that's like so bad if they have them, because it's like, oh boy. Remember that movie um, with Eric Bischoff and the? Uh, I don't know if it was Bischoff that did it, but. While he was there, the inner office memo. The inner office oh, memo. the inner office memo. Yeah, yeah, he was there. That, that was that was actually maybe the beginning of the end because it was one of his secretaries. That though, you mean the racial joke, right? Yeah. Yeah, there was a racial joke posted by um one of the secretaries there. Then and there was a lot of heat because they didn't get fired. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I will tell you what, you know, when it comes to this, you know, it's it's really weird because um, you know, we're talking about like you know um um 
Hard Body Harrison and, and yeah. Bobby Walker, who were um, guys who, ne you know, they never got a push. And, yeah, and, um, um But, I mean, like, there's as far as, like, the talent thing goes, and I'm not encouraging any any type of action or anything, but, I mean, there is something that if, there's more. There's more of a case with with some of the Mexican talent. I mean, like it's one thing for like, um, you know, Hard Body Harrison and Bobby Walker who have no resume of wrestling stardom, no um, exactly just Bob, yeah, no no ability, no outstanding ability above average. And then another one where you bring in. I mean, you could talk about Parka and Sakosis and and you you know you and Hoovy. Yeah. But, I mean, especially you know. I mean, these are guys who have track records of success. That, that have been used as, as comedic figures in certain uh, points. You know that, that they can be pushed to a certain point, yeah. Right. So um, if this lawsuit gets anywhere, it opens up another one, and the other one, you know, there's a lot more validity to the other one. And, boy, boy uh, you know, these things happen in, you know, it, it, because, because of Atlanta, it's always one of those things that always, in the Atlanta wrestling promotion going back mm -hmm. to uh, Thunderbolt Patterson in the 70s, this this story has always come and gone, and I guess this is a lot of racial thing. Yeah, because of the racial thing, because of Atlanta, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we we got to get to the calls right now. Let's get to uh, Derek in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, what's up? What's up, what's up? What's your name? Derek. 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 Uh, yeah, I got a question about Lucha. Have you seen him, seen any of it lately? What's, I, I can't hear you. Has he's, he's seen asked any if, Lucha lately? He's asked he, if you've watched any Lucha Libre lately. Any Lucha Libre lately? Yeah. You know, you know what? Actually, I, I'll be straight up with you. I haven't. I haven't watched it. So you okay, haven't said, seen Ricky Marvin? Have you seen Ricky Marvin wrestle? Have I seen Ricky Marvin wrestle? Yeah. Uh, I've seen him. I've seen him on clips that Conan has. That sometimes I swing by his house. But I've, I've haven't seen like a whole complete show, or I haven't seen him in a in a complete match where where I watch two out of three falls. No, I haven't. Good. Is he good? Is he good? I think so. Yeah, uh, he, he he got over really good. You know, they were in Japan this week. Yeah. And Ricky Ricky Marvin got over real big in Japan this week on that Mil Moscris tour. Oh, the Mil Moscris tour. Yeah, yeah. Because I was reading something that uh, he was kind of like the undercard hit of the tour. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I got one more question. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Super Callow's brothers, Alan Stone and Motocross? You know what? Um, when when I was when I did a couple, probably uh, the few shows that I did for Promo Azteca, that's when I saw him wrestle. And, uh, you know, I, I think they have potential. Definitely. You think they, they could be they up from, in WCW soon? They come from a good from a good background, you know, the father. And, uh, the, I mean, very good school. Do you think they could be up in WCW soon? Um, uh, not, not to, I mean, whether it's WCW, ECW, or WWF, you know. Uh, they, I mean, they, they, they got it to, to come here to the States. Yes, they do. All right, thanks a lot. All right. Later. Okay, thanks a thanks so much, Derek. Um, we're going to go to uh, James in Washington. James, what's going on? Hey, Dave. How's it going? It's going what's good. What's up? Good. A um, couple questions for you. Um, hey, hey, Ray, have you ever wrestled down in Topeka? Topeka? Yeah. Uh, I, yes, I, yes, I have with, with AAA. Yeah, because um, I'm, I'm going down to Mexico next week, and we're going to end up in Topeka, and I was wondering, do you remember what the... Uh, the place where where you, well, you know what? was. Um, I don't know exactly, but I I know there's I know Super Calo had to do with a cup with some with some uh, wrestling shows down there. Yeah. So you I mean as soon as you get to town you might want to look out see where, wherever they have the wrestling. Okay. Matches around. And um, hey Dave, I've been a long time sub subscriber, and um, recently when when I get my newsletter, I've been you know, getting it through the mail for all these years. Um, the spine of it is, like, really worn out, and it, like, um, has worn through, like, four of the pages, and there's a great big chunk of it that I can't read. Yeah. And I don't know. It's like every other issue is that way. Wow. Um, if there's if there's something that you can't read, you know, you should just, like, um, you know, email us or just call us right away, and we'll send out another issue. Yeah. Um but uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't be like that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, sometimes it's it it's on certain things that you know just doesn't interest me. But some of it's kind of kind of a drag. Anyways, um, keep up the keep up the great work. 
Hi, man. Is, is Brian on the line? Hey, what's going on? How's it going, Brian? Is this uh, uh, Luchador James? Yeah. Hey, I'll call you after the show. Okay. All right, cool. All right. All right, th take it easy, Dave. Okay. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, uh, Ray, what did, you, what did you think of uh, that, that story that we just talked about with uh, the lawsuit? With the lawsuit? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's like you said. It 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 seems that it, that it could happen a lot more with with uh, with all the Mexican wrestlers that they, that 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 come from a background of wrestling and that they really haven't pushed to to a certain point. But then again, you know, it's uh, uh, you 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 hear it you hear it all along through WCW that that it's it's always been a racial thing as far as as far as um, blacks trying to file a lawsuit because they, they haven't given the opportunity but you know it's it's, it's then, then again we go back to the same thing politics right or or maybe just a maybe just the frustration of of not be not being able to to get the opportunity to rise but you know it it it, it doesn't uh necessarily have to be a racial thing it just might be not not it's not your not your time you know it did seem like they at least gave the luchadors, uh, like you and Hoovy that took your masks off, a, at least a good push at the beginning after it happened. So yeah. it, it seemed like it was almost a mask deal that really got in the way. But then again, it wasn't like they tried to push you guys all the way to the top. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, it was what, just... what's, what, what's your feeling coming back on that when, with the mask thing? I mean, are you do you wish they hadn't taken the mask? Or, or now looking back, do you think it wasn't that big of a deal? It's it's kind of hard, Dave, because because uh, I, I I grew up with 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 the the opposite uh, the opposite style of of American wrestling, which of course is Mexican and and uh, I mean our psychology is a lot different. And uh, you know once 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 we started working for WCW, a lot a lot of a lot of a lot of heads were talking. You know, you were hearing a lot of things in your ear. You know it's not good because they need to see your face, and, and that's when new opportunities come, and, and the commercials, blah blah blah, blah. And you were like, damn, maybe that is right. And then another part of you was just uh, rephrasing all those ten years that that you lived in wrestling, but but with the mask, like, whoa, you know, it's it's part of you, and and you've carried it for so long, and you know, it's it's not, don't take it off that easy. So it was kind of like. Like a fifty-fifty thing, saying, "Okay, I'm gonna step into the future and and see see how it turns out, or or am I gonna stick with the, with the old school, you know?" And and it it was hard at the time, but but now it's like now that I'm here, I don't I don't regret ever doing it. No, and and who knows if it, if if uh, if I would still have the same popularity if 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 I had the mask. So it, it, it kind of, I kind of just left it up to the Lord's hands, and, and he, he guided me through it. We went through it together, and uh, guess that's why he has me where I'm at right now. But hey, going um, back to that havoc match, you almost lost it that night, right? Yeah, actually, that was that was a belt versus mask match. Yeah, yeah. I remember some things went down that night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you remember that day? Oh yeah. It was like oh, 20 yeah. minutes before I, the match, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was I remember like two days before or a day before. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, I remember watching that match, and it was one of those things where um, it was like this incredible match, and literally, I didn't, I, it's like I didn't know who was going to win because it was like going back and forth, like almost yeah, to the, yeah. until the end. Intense. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, originally, like you know, Eddie was supposed to go over, and then I know that like they, you know, had, like, they held that. I mean, Eric held that to like the last minute. Yeah, was, like okay. last minute thing, boom, and like damn. But uh, yeah, I was. I was. To be honest with you, I wasn't. I wasn't mentally prepared right there at the time. Oh, to lose that match? To lose. To lose. I mean, to lose a match that night. Yeah. And uh, you know, like I said, God is always on my side. So. What? Uh, uh, did you ever become friends with Blitzkrieg? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah I, I lost contact with him recently, but when he was he, when he was right here with us, traveling up and down. I mean, we were. We were good. We were good buddy, um, buddy trips. We used to ride together. 
Because what, what are you, what, what are your thoughts of him? Because I, I thought that like you know he had matches with you and with uh, Juventud mm-hmm. that were that were tremendous, and I thought like. You know, you're watching that, and you're going like, you know, I mean, he's he's still new in the business. I mean, it was basically his first full year in, yeah. And and I was thinking like, you know, like, and he improved. I thought he improved a lot, and and then they, you know, I was like, God, you get rid of a guy who's showing, you know, flashes of actual, you know, real brilliance out there. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't know. I thought it was like, geez, you know, it's like, you know, you can look at certain guys and just go like. You know, this guy's, you know, I don't know, it's too much talent to let him go on, like, a minor cost-cutting thing. I mean, I'm yeah. sure his contract wasn't even that big, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be straight up with this. Uh, the, the thing is, I don't, I don't like, if if I would have been new to the sport here in, in the United States and they would offer me a contract, let's say, for, for I'm, I'm just throwing out a figure here for, for 75 grand, and I really don't know how the money works here in the States. You know, in a heartbeat, I'm gonna go ahead and take it, and 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 I'm, I mean, of course, I'm not gonna back down on it, whether it's too little. You know, if it's too little right now, I'm gonna go ahead and work my way up and let them know that I can obviously make more money with the talent that I have. And as far as Jay, very good friend. You know, we 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 bonded really good. We're both out from the West Coast, and um, and I I think what Jay needed. He just needed a little bit of, of uh, more motivation to the sport because he, he, he felt it. But uh, it was like for, for the minor things, he uh, I guess he didn't feel like being on the road or, or doing this. And, and sometimes I would, I would kind of trip on that a little bit because he's, he's what, only 22, Dave? Something like 22, 23, 22. yeah. 22. I remember at that age... I mean, I was working down in Mexico, and and I, I wasn't I wasn't making even probably what he's ma- what he was making with WCW at the time, and you know I was happy of being on the road and wrestling and working, and and uh, and Jay was kind of uh, Blitzkrieg was kind of like on the you know I, I, as long as I'm on TV that's kind of good, but but being on the road you learn a lot and and you pick up a lot of crowd reaction and and you get the the rhythm and, and you kind of start building up, and I think that's the only thing that that Blitzkrieg needed. He just needed that that timing there for for each little thing, because he had. I mean, his his skills are perfect in the ring. I mean, he gets off, he gets off, but but I guess he he really didn't like being on the road that much. Yeah, well, that's that, that that'll definitely work against you in wrestling, Brian. Yeah, I wanted to... yeah, you got you got to stick with 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 what they're gonna give you. Yeah, Brian, I wanted to bring up the one name here in that suit. That I find really interesting, which is the name Sonny Ono. Yeah, I mean, he, did he was, a, I mean, he got a fairly, he got a fairly good role until uh, Bischoff left. Well, I mean, the thing with, with 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 the with the role that he played, okay, I mean, he had a lot of input into what he was doing. I mean, he wasn't like it wasn't like he was a guy underneath who's just being told what to do. I mean, he was he was very powerful in the company for a yeah, while he was there. Very powerful. He took. He yeah, took. And, and, and 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 I mean, like you know, you know, he lost his job when Eric lost his job. Okay, but the point is, is that, you know, like for you know him to complain about a demeaning role, it was like, geez, you know, wasn't. I mean, I, I sense that was a lot of his doing anyway. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he made the best. Himself. He made the best that he could while, while Eric was there. I mean, he was, he was, he was like. Like you said, he had a lot of power. He had a lot of yeah. power in that company. So I mean, why, why, why even complain about something like that when, at the time, you were you were on top? Yeah, I mean that name like really, it's really interesting. Got so. also bring up Norman Smiley's name as another black guy that's got a huge push right now. Oh yeah, that's right, Norman Smiley. Yeah, Smiley, uh, yeah. Not. Um, they could argue that role is sort of, um, you know what I mean? You know, he's playing like a really, you know, it's, it's even as a babyface, it's a semi-demeaning role. Certainly, it was, you know, you know what I mean? I mean that, but but you know, yeah, yeah he's that's there. That's kind of like a a goofy role that anybody could play, you know? No, you're you're yeah, anyone yeah, anyone could play the crybaby, and anyone could you know go in the. You're right. It, that's it's not a it's absolutely not a racial role. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. You, even even though you do know as as as. As uh, black people would always be up front with things, you know, never back down from 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 anything, you know. Always, yeah. Always on, like, you know, always on top, you know. Uh, if, if, they, if they want somebody with you, you know, you're like, what, you know? You're always there, and 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 uh, you know, it's kind of hard to see uh, a black black person like Norman 
I mean, without using any racial, um, uh, doing the crybaby gimmick because you 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 hardly see anybody like that. But if it if it's him, perfect. Yeah. We are completely out of time, Ray. I want to thank you very much for uh, doing the show today, and I want to. Is there? Do you got any kind of a date as far as uh, when you might be able to come back? I mean, like to a month or something like that. You know what? I got I got a I got a doctor's appointment on March sixth. And uh, I think after that, I'd probably say um, April. Probably back on TV by April. Okay.